This clip is part of a series taken from the audio mastering course featuring Waves plugins. It's been developed by Doug Shearer, the mastering engineer for acts such as the Guillemots, Kasabian and Jamelia. The audio mastering course is designed to help you make your tracks sound like the ones you hear in the club or on the radio. To get more content like this, visit the free courses section at pointblankonline.net. Okay, so we've seen that a limiter is for making tracks louder. And that's good, right? That's what we want. Excellent. So let's demonstrate. Play a track. Lower the threshold. And at some point we're going to hit our loudest peak and we'll see it on the attenuation meter at the right. Seeing a bit of activity now. But louder, louder. Let's keep going up. And we're getting louder, we're getting louder. We're still getting louder, but it's, the sound is going horribly wrong. So obviously, total loudness isn't the only issue. And also, as we get louder and louder, it's almost not getting louder anymore. It's almost hard to tell, because as we listen louder, it seems bigger and more impressive almost. It's a psychoacoustic trick that when we hear something really loud, it seems quite impressive for a while. So we need a bit more of a methodical approach to how loud we should be making it, how much we should be limiting. And so what do we know about limiters? We know that the threshold is triggered by the peak level in the music. So if we look at our track, we can see what's making those peaks. So if we play a little for a start. Well, it's pretty much snares. Big snare there. That's pretty much the main offender in the peak department. Let's just see how exactly how loud this, these peaks are. If we go to the sample editor, we get a function, search peak. This will tell us where the highest peak is. And there it is, just after bar 22 or so. If we play through it, on the meter we can see it's 1.8. So if we close the sample editor again, we know that's the highest peak in the whole track. So that's a good guide. Because um, obviously we have to work with the loudest part of the track. Some tracks build and build and build, so often you might want to look at the end of the track as the loudest part. In this case, we've got a big peak early on, and the rest of the track seems fairly even, more or less, looking at the waveform anyway. So that's some guide, it's not an absolute truth. You still have to listen and watch your meters. Anyway, let's make a loop around this loud section. And just have a look at the limiter again. Now we're back at uh, you know our default setting on the limiter, and as we've seen before, the L2 and the L3, some of the waves limiters, have this very nice uh, feature where you can gang the output ceiling and the threshold controls, thereby as you limit more, it turns the output down in the corresponding level. So as you limit more, as you bring these threshold down, we're not going to notice any change in level. But we are going to start here perceived loudness. And it's, there's going to be a sweet spot where it sounds loudest. And as we limit too much, it's going to start going mushy and, or, and sound quieter, in fact. So we go down, we see we're attenuating a bit now on some of the peaks. So if we keep going, it, ooh, it's starting to, it's starting to not be so good now. It's, it's quieter early on as we add a bit more. It sounds nicer and more together, or it has minimal change. And we get more change and more change, and it starts sounding quieter and rubbisher, if that's a word. So we just got to find this sweet spot where 
where it still sounds good, the peaks are controlled, but it, we're not getting these distortion artifacts. It's not sounding all kind of flat and mushy. So if we lower the threshold and the output ceiling again, and listen closely, Still all right. Five passion check. Still sounds decent. Sounds you know we we haven't destroyed anything. We go a bit more. Now we've lost a little bit of the swing and the snare here, and as we know, this, the snare is the thing that's going to be triggering the limiter, and that's going to be affected most by it because of that. And so that's the thing to really listen to. And we have lost some some power, some swing in it. That's not necessarily the end of the world. We are mastering, and there is going to be a change sonically in the mastering process and to a degree it's a matter of taste as to how far you like to push things. When you start losing the power in an instrument then it's probably time to back off because you want it to be exciting, that's the whole point of music, it's supposed to be supposed to move you and if it starts sounding flat then it doesn't move you anymore. Also worth listening to is at some point the bass frequencies are going to start triggering the limiter as well and that can be a problem because limiters are quite good at catching fast peaks but they're not so good at dealing with um, slower waves like the bass waves and they might just distort and that's a thing to listen out for. They're actually really efficient at just dealing with things like snares because they're quick and they can deal with the peaks. But anyway, let's back off because we, we are hurting it now. It's somewhere around here that is that's kind of not a bad compromise. It seems to come across more. The music seems to jump out a bit more at this around this level, and if we push it more, it just starts sounding wrong and it starts sounding quieter, which is not what we want. What we want the track to sound loud. We don't need it to have necessarily to have high level. It's a different thing. So we could probably go a little bit more. Nine and a half or, or ten is alright. Take a little bit of a hit on the snare and that's fine. It still sounds good, it still sounds swingy. Now of course that we've, we've found our sweet spot of the limiter, we can turn the output ceiling back up and get back all that gain that we've been working for. And we've put it normally to minus 0.1. That's it to catch any rogue over levels. So just out of tidiness really, we go to minus 0.1. And we bypass. And that's what we've done. So far we've pushed it. It's quite a difference. But we've retained the spirit of the track and we've retained the sound of the track. Uh, so if we move on and look at another track, reset our limiter. And let's go to this track. Very different sound. And we can just tell from the waveform that there's there seems to be more going on towards the end, which is often what we expect, what we expect to see. And just listen to the, uh, the fat bass we have going on there. And if we look at the peaks a bit closer, So you can see the, the highest peaks are being caused pretty much by those big bass notes. And as we said before, that could be a problem. So it might be a different kettle of fish limiting this track. So if we go back to our limiter 
and do the same trick again. We lower the air. We gang threshold and output ceiling together by using this central button. And see what happens. We see on the right we're starting to attenuate. And you can see that when the bass is playing, that's when you're getting attenuation. You can tell that's what you're affecting the most. Oh, do you see? It's gone. It's just absolutely gutting that bass and distorting it. That sounds unpleasant to my ear. <laughs> so none of these things are cast in stone. You, you know, you have to apply your own taste in mastering and make it sound wicked. That's the point. But I think most people would agree that that bass is sounding to sound rubbish. Uh, and so we would back off. That's a bit better, somewhere around there is... That's kind of acceptable. I think it's doing a little bit, but... That's fine, more or less. So in this shape, this is as far as we could probably take limiting on this track. This excessive bass, if it is excessive, discuss, is maybe something we might look at when we're EQing, and we might balance the track uh, a different way before it gets to the limiter, and we might be able to get more out of it, maybe bring up more of the air, uh, the rest of the track. But as it stands, with the limiter, all we can do is this. It's just gonna get worse if we hit it harder. So let's put it, put that back level back in. Our output ceiling at minus 0.1. And then AB. And again, we've added a decent amount of level. That's fine. If we want to go any higher, we want to get the level, push the level anymore. Probably not to be done with a, a limiter. We might have to address it with compression or EQ. 